A CRY FROM EGYPT CHAPTER 9 PART 3 The rest of the morning and afternoon dragged on like an eternity for Ada. She felt miserable, but had to act joyful. She tried to think about whether or not she should ask leave to visit her family and tell them the news or just send another message. In the late afternoon, storm clouds rolled in off the sea, making everything dark and rather cool. The queen complained of a headache and lay down, sending Ada off to get some herbs and water for her. Finally, Ada could have some time alone to think and pray. Why me? Why did Packy choose me? What will I say? What will I do? Oh, Yahweh, please, don't make me marry this man. Please save me from being married to this pagan. She prayed as she walked back from the kitchen through the dark passage of the palace. Though Ada hardly wanted to admit it, she had always admired Itan. But since she was in the palace and he was just a common slave, she knew that no relationship could exist between them. Still, when she compared Itan to Packy, she knew that Packy was not what she desired in a husband. Abruptly, the sound of pottery shattering on the floor startled Ada. She peered into the darkness. Hello, who's there? The next instant, an arm was thrown around her neck, holding her tightly. Ada struggled, but she couldn't move. She started to scream, but a hand was clamped over her mouth. She felt cold metal against her throat. She craned her neck backwards and saw the dark skin of an Egyptian man. Prepare to meet your death, Hebrew dog, he spat out. Ada panicked. She hardly realized what she was doing. She kicked her attacker as hard as she could. A low grunt of pain escaped the man, and he relaxed the grip on her. Quick as a flash, she was free. She threw his arm into the wall and heard the knife clatter to the floor. Then she darted down the hallway. But the Egyptian had recovered himself quickly and was right behind her. Help! Ada screamed. Somebody help me! Someone stepped out in front of Ada, blocking her path. She shrieked, but whoever it was grabbed her gently and moved protectively in front of her. He put his arm out to guard her. Ada turned to see the first man charging down the hallway. He stopped abruptly on seeing Ada behind her protector. Get out of the way, Packy, the man growled. This has nothing to do with you. The Hebrew dog needs to die so the gods can be appeased. Ada gasped as she realized who her savior was. I think this has everything to do with me, Hiru. Packy's voice was surprisingly nonchalant. You see, I happen to believe that the Hebrews have nothing to do with this nasty affair, and I know this young lady is especially innocent. Furthermore, I'm not going to stand by and let her be murdered in cold blood. So I suggest you go on your way before I call the guards. Why, you little... Something akin to a roar escaped Hiru's mouth. He flew at Packy with the rage of a wild animal. Packy held his ground until Hiru was practically on top of him. Then a knife seemed to leap into his hand of his own accord. And in a moment... The two men were engaged in a life-and-death duel. Guards! Guards! Ada cried, pressing herself up against the wall to stay out of the way of the flashing blades. Suddenly, Hiru reached out and pushed Packy into the wall with his bare hand. The dagger was coming down upon Packy's chest. Ada couldn't breathe. She couldn't move. The next moment was a blur. Packy threw himself forward and down into a roll, knocking Hiru off balance. Hiru fell heavily to the ground, and the knife flew from his hand and landed at Ada's feet. Ada instinctively reached out and grabbed it, while Packy at the same moment leapt upon Hiru's back and put his dagger against Hiru's neck. One move, and you die, Packy hissed, panting from exertion. Hiru lay perfectly still, but he uttered foul curses under his breath. Ada heard footsteps echoing down the hall. The soldiers are coming, she breathed in relief. As Heru heard this, he made one last effort to escape. 
But Packy grabbed Haru's arms and pinned them behind Haru's back with one hand, still keeping the dagger against his opponent's neck. The guards came rushing down the hallway. When Ada saw them, utter relief swept over her. Her knees felt weak and she sank to the floor. Her head was spinning and she found it hard to see. She barely heard Packy explain rapidly what had just happened. As if in a daze, she saw three guards leading Hiru away. Abruptly, everything was quiet, and Packy was kneeling next to her. Are you all right? he asked in concern. Ada didn't trust herself to speak. She simply nodded. She was trembling all over, and tears were threatening to spill out of her eyes. Are you sure? Packy pressed. Ada nodded again, choking back a sob. Yes, she whispered. Thank you, she sobbed out. Packy gave her a half grin. You look quite stunned. Here, let me help you back to your chamber. Packy grabbed both of her hands and slowly helped her to her feet. Ada's heart was still pounding, and she realized that she was truly crying, not just sobbing anymore. She clung to Packy's arm, barely able to stand. She felt dizzy and thought she might fall. Shh, it's all right. You're safe now, Packy said comfortingly. He slowly led her through the hallways, supporting her and helping her along the way. Before Ada fully realized what was happening, a guard was opening the door to the Queen's apartment. There were exclamations of surprise from the women inside as Packy assisted Ada in and guided her to a chair. Ada, what has happened? Are you hurt? The queen exclaimed. Ada shook her head and swallowed. She tried to speak, but Packy placed a hand on her shoulder and spoke for her. She has been attacked by an Egyptian servant. He's been captured, and some guards have taken him away to prison. What? The queen gasped. Who was it? He will certainly be killed for laying a hand on my servant. His name is Heru, my lady. He's been a guard here for several years. I've known him to be a very superstitious man, and I think he believes, as do many of the servants here, that the Hebrews are causing the plagues. I'm glad I heard Ada's cries when I did. Heru attacked her in a quiet corridor, and the guards would not have come in time, Packy explained. Packy, how can I ever thank you enough, the queen said in an excited tone. Packy just shrugged and said, it was nothing. Lexine, who had been attending to Ada, gave her water and examined her scratches and bruises. Ada could feel a little bit of color coming back to her cheeks. I believe that Ada is fine, my lady, but a little stunned, as any girl would be, Lexine reported to the queen. Good, the queen said with a sigh of relief. Packy, did you say there are others in the palace that feel the same way about the Hebrews? Yes, my lady, I'm afraid there are, though I doubt that many of them would take drastic steps like Heru did. But others might. Do you really think that there's danger for Ada and possibly Lexine right here in the palace? The queen fretted. There is that possibility, my queen, Packy replied, nodding his head. The queen clutched her heart and fear filled her eyes. I must send out a decree at once that if anyone lays hands on one of my slaves, that he shall be instantly put to death. Do you think that will dissuade these horrible men? Possibly, my queen, but there could be other men who were in a league with Heru and will do anything to avenge his execution and carry out the deed that he desired to do. Until a trial and inquiries take place, we can't be sure that Ada will not be attacked again. The queen was now anxiously pacing the floor. Ada was starting to regain her composure. But all this talk about people waiting around dark hallways for the sole intent of killing her made a pain of fear drive deep into her heart. What do you think I should do for Ada's safety, Packy? the queen asked at length. Ada was surprised by the amount of trust she was putting in this young man. I have no right to tell your ladyship anything, Packy began softly, but I would humbly ask, that Ada and possibly Lexine be sent back to Goshen for a short amount of time until formal inquiries can be made. None of the people in the palace besides your ladyship, my lordship, and myself know where Ada and Lexine live. There I think they will be safe, 
until we find out who was involved in this conspiracy. The queen stood still, staring off into space, tapping her finger against her leg. Finally, she said, Yes, Packy, I do believe you are right. The queen quickly turned toward Packy and said, Go get several guards that you know you can trust for strong escort, and please tell Pharaoh that I request a private audience with him about this matter. Come back here when everything is in readiness, and please escort Ada and Lexine back to their homes. Dismiss the soldiers once you get into the border of Goshen, so that they don't know any of my servants' whereabouts. Yes, my queen. Packy bowed respectfully and turned to go. Ada was finally able to collect her voice, and she called out after him. Packy? He turned to face her. Thank you. I know I wouldn't be alive if you had not come in time. Packy smiled, a very nice smile. Ada noted. You're welcome. I was glad to be of service to you. With a parting smile, he left. Lexine, go quickly and pack some things for Ada and yourself. I expect you'll be gone at least overnight. Ada, try to rest and enjoy yourself in Goshen. I'm loath to part with you, but I believe with all that has happened today that Packy is right. Just sit here until the escort is ready. You look quite shocked, poor child. Thank you, my queen. You are too kind, Ada murmured. Her thoughts were swirling. She was really going home. Home away from this wonderful but horrible place and all the terror and new things it held for her. And we'll start on the next chapter in the next video. In the meantime, thanks so much for listening. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. I love you guys. Bye-bye.